In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of, of Eternity, Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into, into the wisdom of God's Word. Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Bless the name of Jesus. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory. Just lift your voice and speak to him. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. Thank him for an encounter. Thank you because his word will transform you. We are saying faithful are you Lord. Faithful are you Lord. Faithful are you Lord. Faithful we are saying, Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. One more time. We are saying. Lord Jesus, we sincerely thank you. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be gathered tonight in your presence. And Lord Jesus, we pray that your word will change us. We pray that your word will transform us. We pray that your word will lift us. We pray that you will bless us. Let the sick be healed tonight, O oh God. Let the oppressed be delivered. Change our understandings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please greet one another. Be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Again, we apologize for the sound quality. Our technical department, um, they are doing their best to stabilize the sound. So please bear with us inside, outside. I'll be as clear as possible and I hope that um, we all pay attention. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll continue on our teaching on the secrets of the kingdom. Tonight will be part 2. I welcome everyone. Um, those following us online, you're most welcome. You're part of us. Open your heart. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'd like to start tonight. We have a lot to cover. Just to prepare our hearts before we go into our discussions. This was a vision that Jeremiah had with the Lord. Jeremiah 1, and we'll start reading from verse 4. We're reading down to 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 to 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Jeremiah replies, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, 
for I am a child. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, saying, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He said, Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now this is the verse of emphasis. 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10. See, I have this day. Listen, this is God revealing to a man the possibilities that can become of his life if he dares to believe God. How can God give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy. God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him. He said, see, listen, I have said this day, I have said, uh, I have this day said the over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy to throw down, to build, and to plant. That is the prophetic word. This is what I want to do with your life. This is how far I want to do business with you. Verse 11, moreover, in continuation, he says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, this is what I want to do with your life, but what is your perception? He says, what seest thou? I have shown you what I see about your life, but what do you see? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then the next verse, he says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast what? well seen. Please give us any other version. NIV, any other version. It says, thou has well seen. There's a version that says, thou has seen correctly. I don't know exactly which of them, but just, just give us any other version that has a different rendition. NIV says, you have seen what? You have seen Jeremiah, this is your prophetic destiny regardless of your age and your background regardless of your limitations i have set you when he said this day not when you grow up in my mind this day i have set you over nations to root out pull down uproot build but then he says the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see and then he says, what seest thou? He says, I see the rod of an almond tree. And then he says, you have seen correctly. On the strength of your correctness, you have authorized me to watch, to see that my word, which you have seen and agreed with me, must come to pass. He says, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Please give us Amplified. Amplified says, For I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform. Right? It says, I am alert and active, watching over my word. Hallelujah. It starts by revealing to Jeremiah his prophetic destiny in Christ. Jeremiah begins to lament. Theologically speaking, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. The nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation. And that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate. It was a reflection of the burden that was upon him. So oftentimes you would hear him weeping as he communicated his thoughts from God. So Jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain the same complaint happened with Moses in Exodus chapter 3 don't turn there the Bible says when God saw that he turned aside 
right to see the great sight he said moses take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground are we together now after he showed moses everything moses started complaining and said but lord you know i'm a stammerer and then his unbelief grieved the heart of god and god spoke fiercely to him he said who created the mouth if i can show you i can turn your rod to a serpent if i can cause fire in a bush yet not burned what does it take to heal you of stammering he says because you have limited me i will use you to the degree you believe me but since the issue of speaking you did not believe me i will raise aaron to be a spokesman it was never god's intention for aaron to be Moses' spokesman he was supposed to be healthy and healed are we together his limitation affected the dimension to which god could find expression in him please pay attention to this you see every time god calls a man god does not just begin to use the man because he's called because oftentimes the vessel that god calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with God. You see that happen to all the patriarchs. Abraham, for a long time, when God began to speak to him about his child coming, Abraham for a long time, listen, he tried to agree, but the reality of his supposed impotency and Sarah's barrenness to a point where Sarah laughed. She laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations. God could not do so much with Abraham until one time God told Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, try to count the stars. Abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it. He said, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God. He agreed with God. Oh, now I understand what you are trying to tell me. And then the Bible says it was credited, reckoned unto him for righteousness. It is not just enough to know that God is mighty. Please listen. The dynamics of impact, the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that God is mighty as great and mighty as god is if that is the scope of your revelation about him um you will be blessed it will impart reverence and awe but you will not be able to do much the idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life so that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life here he meets jeremiah and says jeremiah i want to do business with you and jeremiah comes as a young boy he says lord i've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets now you are telling me i'm a prophet but i'm limited my background my ideologies are limiting me and god began to challenge his perception the series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the working principles of the kingdom. I call them secrets or mysteries. The very laws upon which impact in the kingdom is founded. Your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an end life of impact your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life so please pay attention you see it is the word of God that transforms but I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion there is a system through which the word transforms people the word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. 
write this word down word w-o-r-d is the greek word logos and that word logos it does not just mean the speakings of a man right the the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts please write it down thoughts like thinking thoughts is the word idea write it down is the word opinion opinion is the word paradigm paradigm and it is also the word mindset so when we say the word of god we are not just saying the things god is saying no we are saying the the understandings that construct his mind are you following me now when we say the word of god transforms that word word is not just the speakings of god like his communication from his mouth to you it means his ideas it means his ideology it means god's opinion about everything let me tell you how we are changed when your life consistently keeps realigning to god's own idea about everything are we together so you find out what god's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy and you compare that to your current state they tell you you have ss they tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you but you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you and so he tells you by his stripes i am healed i have been healed if the spirit that raised christ from the dead right dwells in your mortal body the bible says that same spirit will revitalize now that's his opinion you can be aware of it and still remain sick or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of god come to pass in your life you see god is alert ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony it may take a while brothers and sisters but as surely as you correctly believe god give him time there must be a performance in your life say amen i am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical. But it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned something in that equation is missing and this is why people get born again and they say i'm born again i'm a believer why are things not changing in my life everything i used to suffer before i'm still suffering them after and i'll tell you why because you see you receive salvation through faith an act of god's grace but there is a partnership with you to activate the realities. The Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation. Everybody say wells. Not just one. Salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities. Your finances, your health, your life, the operation of the spirit in your life, your spiritual growth. It is now left for you through the ministry of the holy spirit to walk with the word of god and change your mindset please hear me i am i am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal 
will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever. The only difference is the security of his eternal salvation. But as far as the earth is concerned, there will be no, absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you. He said, except a man be born again. He said, he shall not, he cannot see the kingdom. He uses the word see the kingdom. Are we together? Verse 3. Verse 4. Nicodemus responds and says, ah, How can a man now be born again when he is old? Will he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Then Jesus explains his concept. Verse 5. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and the spirit. Then he switches terminologies. He says, He shall not enter. It's one thing to see the kingdom. But it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom. I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations. It is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God. It is another thing to enter the experience of it. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is a process. That process is your degree of alignment. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. This will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you tonight? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people, live under the expectations of God and they're not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen, he gave unto some prophets. He gave on to some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering razors. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing. If you are in the fivefold ministry, and you're not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom, make it clear, let the inhabitants, believers, understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, Ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked, I never knew. That there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, it's not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry. By grace, it's not just about their spiritual life. There is an anointing that comes upon them. And gives them an advantage. A superior working of the spirit in their life. Gives them uncommon understanding. To the working knowledge of the kingdom. To the end that they will now call believers and say. Guys, I found it. I think I've seen the reason why you are not anointed. 
uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motive and then the person says really I, I came from a background that is not so good and um, I'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self worth and you say no I've studied the kingdom and I found out that once your motive is to glorify yourself you cannot have the anointing are you seeing now the fivefold ministry you have edified that person so he goes back in prayer scans his motive and say lord i change my my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere now he climbed the tree i know why he was a wicked man because of his size he probably felt that they were looking down on him and so he had to amass wealth to cover for something so the issue was not finances the issue was trying to cover for inferiority are we together and he climbed the tree to see jesus and jesus said don't climb it's your house i'm going to jesus meets the man and at once he corrects zacchaeus mentality he says i didn't come to your house because you are rich i didn't come to your house because you are tall in other words it's not about those things it's about my love and my grace you did not qualify but i came to your house and zacchaeus said that means there's no need defrauding people at once he changed his mindset are we together now he started returning everything and said ah, my amassing money was not because i like money i was hoping that through it i will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house now jesus has abused my mentality and he says there's no need for that old thinking we must be like zacchaeus tonight opening up our hearts and the moment the word of god comes you don't argue with it you see only foolish people argue with the word of god especially when you are not getting results in your life we live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about are we together someone who doesn't play football you see him arguing for three hours he says i know how much i will pay them this amount meaning his team and he never contributed anything and he never wonders and say come why is my life not working like the person i'm talking about people argue all around why should doctors go on strike and the person is not even a, he's not near medicine he doesn't know anything we like talking boldly about things we know nothing about and that's the danger we keep venting our ignorance but when we come to god he requires that we become silent that's what mary did Martha was busy about commanding and talking and Jesus said Martha Martha you are worried and upset about many things you are trying to get things done but one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to do what to sit at the feet there's something about being still in God's presence when he was about to feed the 5,000 he said let them sit down if you can't sit down there's no bread for you sitting down is a sign of stability he makes me lie down in green pastures oh but joshua selma you i have bills to pay tomorrow sit down in green pastures 
your running around is not the solution let me tell you something when we go through things we think god is disturbed the way we are disturbed and we say god keep responding on the go and god says i'm not going to talk to you prove you trust me by sitting down in five minutes that sickness you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and god is saying just sit down i can address this issue you can't even raise 3.5 million to go to india so why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you are about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Sapre Teketi Baladaba. Mambros Kalabri de Shikrea Suparato Sabrati Alabadadia. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results and there are so many of them we've shared a lot of them in this house but in this series i took six of them six irrefutable laws of the kingdom that when you walk with please hear me when you walk and live by these truths when you allow the word of god to superimpose your thinking and it becomes your conviction and you are diligent to act i promise you there will be a performance hallelujah deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says and it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do 
and observe all that I commanded this day. Not choose the ones you like. To do and observe, keep, live by all these laws that I give unto you. Right? It says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then he begins to tell you, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country. And all of that, all those blessings. But they are tied to your obedience. They are tied to faith. They are tied to your response. Which is a product of your conviction. When you don't believe a thing, you cannot live by it. You cannot act upon it. And so we took some laws. The first was the law of encounter. And we spoke about complete surrender. That was the first discussion that complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man. That every time you see a man, a woman, a man of God walking in unusual, strange dimensions of graces, the issue is not criticizing them. The issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant you see that and they come up with you would you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics they'll say where is the woman bring her let's see her and the baby and let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years as if the man forgot when he married his wife you see how people think so every time people see unusual levels of grace they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that but the key is complete surrender never forget this forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself your reputation your anointing your sermon the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of god who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and and and, and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward. By uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me. And every time they come, their first question is, what is the secret to the anointing? And they think it's just some magic formula. I'll say this and that and that. Eat bitter leaf for one week. Add cabbage. After that, pray. Just put cross on your head for three days and get into power. That's charm. That's, that's not the way it works. It's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit. No, those who use that know what they are doing. But those who, you see, true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship. It's a product of relationship. You cannot receive from a God you do not know. You can receive from a herbalist you do not know. You can receive from a native doctor you do not know. You don't even have to know them. But if you want to receive from God, the first assignment is not your hand, it's your heart. My son, give me your heart. So we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was a revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater listen to this the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart his mind so he is i told you this law it is the law that births realities in our world that your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change 
until your mind changes. Anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life. Genesis 11, God came and saw Nimrod, the son of Cush, mobilized certain people and said, Go to come, let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. The Bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building. And then the Bible says God came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built. God said as far as he was concerned, they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here. Your life will never change until your mind changes. Let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind. If one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you, that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dashed the person the clothes and in two weeks, a shirt that was white has become brown. The person's mind is showing on the shirt. Are we together now? Yes. You give that person a shirt. Ordinarily, you wear it for two days and wash it, or one day and wash it. But this guy has worn it for two weeks. Why? Because in his mindset, he says it is not necessary. Neatness is unnecessary. It's only um, an emergency. And once I am not sick, there is no reason why I should be neat. That's what his mindset is telling him. So he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away. If the shirt has love written on it, you see that the O has faded or disappeared. Two weeks. It's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC, just signing papers. And his salary is 10 million. And we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit. It's not the AC. It's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will still stabilize us. He would drink what is in the fridge because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's all right. Let me have your attention. Please. So with that kind of thinking, look up please. With that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding, what happens to the person? You know, so it has to be in your life as it is in your mind. People try to change their physical environment. We use all kinds of things to change our mindsets. So somebody can wear a suit and feel like a CEO, but there's, there's nothing CEO there. You see, so there's nothing to deliver. You can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say, who are you? you? say, my name is this and that. I am the CEO. What is your value? I don't understand what you're saying. Because for you to be a CEO, there's something you should have gotten. You ignored it and thought it was all suits. How we fool ourselves. We hate adjusting our minds. But we love trying to fake it in the physical. And Nigerians can fake things. We can fake wealth. You can fake as... You, people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time. Whereas in their mindset, they are living in abject poverty. And they will not make adjustments. And sometimes pastors... In a bit to encourage people, this is what we tell people. Act like your future. And what, what I understand what we mean. We mean change your mindset. But someone now says, okay, I'm hearing, act like your future. And hot son, the person wears suit and tie and is moving. Say, I am a CEO. He carries a bag. And he thinks 
I'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new information. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it, will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change that's why people create temporal changes and then their mindset superimpose it are we together so i try to act as if i'm a christian i'm not serious about god and i'm not serious about the world but simply because i want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia and she has told me if i don't come for koinonia no relationship i come and i fake it are we together while they are singing i watch people raise their hands I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, Guard your heart with all diligence, he says. For out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind. Let me tell you why many of us are confused. We are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive. You finish listening to a worship song right now. Two hours of strong worship. Are we together? The moment you finish, you have the selection. You have gospel songs. You have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that, well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kind, enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time. You finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you pray for two hours but right now you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking. You have to protect your heart. Build a wall around your heart. Don't allow just anything to find expression. No. No. There are things I will never be found associating with. Not be, I don't care whether they are good or bad, honestly. I am on a project. I am well aware of how much my life would have changed if I were more renewed than I am now. And I'm on a consistent project to renewing myself. I'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness. Are we together now? Please be careful what you allow in your mind. 
you allow people keep talking to you you sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say four months millionaire there are thieves in nigeria i saw one he's my neighbor let me i'm just waiting for that guy and you sit down let me tell you what you are doing you are associating wealth with negativism your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy so somebody becomes a millionaire in four months instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he did he practice what sacrifice what happened no we don't argue we say no way it took me 20 years your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf how can a young man become a millionaire in one month 20 years one uh, four months it took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver that's how long it took you to be in the labor room 20 years are we together there are different ways to get to lagos you can trek you can ride a bike are we together you can follow a luxurious bus you can have your private car you can fly you can take a private charter you can have your own jet you will arrive in different conditions don't don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition no that guy who trekked from when buhari won that gentleman they they appreciated him but have did you see the guy yes that's how life is with many people we use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny and when we find people applying superior kingdom principles rather than finding out we argue and we say no this is the only way i know that means that's the only way there is tell somebody there is another way hallelujah say there is another way please give us first corinthians chapter 12 the last verse first corinthians 12 the last verse hallelujah hallelujah god is changing us first corinthians 12 the last verse please everybody read it says but covet earnestly the best gifts uh-huh read on and yet i show unto you a more excellent way say there is a more excellent way the fact that you are doing it the way you know to do brothers and sisters hear me does not mean that is the only way you can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary in bible school but that does not mean that is the ultimate way there is a more excellent way are we together you can manage your family the way you know you can try to know God the way you have been taught. But there is a more excellent way. And that's the way that the Lord is teaching us. That it is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. It will always take partnership. Because the kingdom of God is made of systems. And every system defines the operation of God. In a particular way. There is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom. There is the economic system of the kingdom. Are we together now? There is the family system of the kingdom. The area I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry. And while I was teaching them, I taught them something. I told them, I said, when the devil comes to your life, he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand. That becomes his entrance point in your life. So if Satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person, he will not start his attack that way. He finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word. You have already understood the relevance. Yet, you are not an excellent person. He uses your lapse of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything satan tried to access the life of jesus through different systems at first he tried to terminate him at birth it didn't happen he refrained himself waited for jesus when he was tired he now came trying to use hunger turn these stones into bread it didn't work he tried to use pride and ego are you not the son of god he shall put his angels charge over you even try to use spirituality 
Jesus defeated him and the Bible says he left him for a season watch this he now tried to come through Peter are we together to prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection Jesus detected it and rebuked him finally he came through Judas and he was allowed so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because Jesus did not know the Bible says after they took the communion Satan entered Judas and he went and caused made the arrangement for them to kill Jesus Christ the systems of the kingdom the area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. and so I'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified not just spiritually not just financially not just maritally there will be complete and balanced growth number three i shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies there is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives and it's found in proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and there's a promise tied to it said if you acknowledge him he shall direct your path right then you read verse 7 it says be not wise in your own understanding fear the lord and turn away from evil but the verse of emphasis is verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and she shall direct your path that every time you are confused in your life which is normal for men we are human beings we do not have all the knowledge there are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you listen to me please there are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains financial mountains marital mountains educational mountains career mountains spiritual mountains health mountains there are all kinds of mountains before you and Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains he says every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad you are confused you don't know what to do he says forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him flaunt his majesty remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway number four the law of mastery and competence this is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards the kingdom operates on a reward system this is one of the fundamental laws of wealth one of the fundamental laws of relevance one of the fundamental laws of influence one of the fundamental laws of greatness the law of competence proverbs 18 16 it says the gift of a man I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them they will bring you all kinds of rewards tangible rewards what are tangible rewards money and all the physical privileges that come and intangible rewards the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity it brings fulfillment but it happens only at the mercy of competence I'm building tonight right here when a man finds his God-given ability Koinonia please listen to me I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pay attention when a man finds his God-given ability he has found his way out of mediocrity he has found his way out of failure he has found his way out of pain and tears but your gift in itself 
although it came from God, it always comes as a seed. It always comes unrefined. Listen to me. It will take that gift passing through a process of refining, of development. Are we together now? And of, of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that God is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area I have problems with men of God because we never challenge people to be at their best they just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them because we know that their gifts the way it is someone comes to meet you and says i want to have a, a construction company how many years experience do you have nothing do you have a very credible engineer no you are the one who is the ceo of the company what did you study you studied fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribe man and they now bring one million for the man of God and the man of God said go it is done I told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity favor hear me is when preparedness meets opportunity you want a job but please and please before I prophesy to you have you done your homework are we together now you are trusting God for a job somewhere. Before I speak to you, have you learned people's skills? Have you mastered your art? Do you know your onions? Can you deliver competently? Don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot, you have not done your homework. It's a mockery on God. So God gives you an opportunity. You have not mastered your cooking. And they now tell you cook for 300 people the name of your company is goodness catering services that it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered you now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid he did something to you as a favor because you are his church member but on your part you could not deliver before you start crying for favor make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in. Have you studied on parenting? You see, many times, let me tell you something. Get my teaching, Activating Seasons of Favor. The Lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities. Because time and chance, opportunities and seasons happen to them all. One day, like the hand of a clock, your turn will come. It must come. But the key is to prepare. So that the day you enter the presence of greatness, you will never have to return again. Say amen. Competence. I'd like you to say after me in the name of Jesus. I am gifted. Oh, come on, Koinonia, chorus it. In the name of Jesus. I am gifted. I am anointed. The ability of the Spirit is at work in me. And I cooperate with God by refining those gifts. Knowing this, that a day of favor must come to me. And I do not want to abuse that day. One day in the life of any man, listen. One day in the life of any man, you will be seated before your destiny helpers. It's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together I dread any time in my life when I will stand in the presence of greatness 
and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door. I dread the time when Koinonia will be 100,000 members and yet I do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds. Do you think God will give you? There are certain people God pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual. Anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage. There are people who can only manage anything less than one million. They have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you 100 million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. It is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down. Refine your gifts. Don't just identify them. Refine them. They are the keys. They are your bailout. They are your bailout. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Hello? Koinonia, listen to me. The concept of something for nothing is wickedness. Everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together? So they bully you. They say your money or your life. Bill Gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution. You know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked? They get their money by corruption. We cannot see the value commensurate to what they have. We see a man who is a local government chairman. We do not see any developmental strides. We don't see any entrepreneurial acumen. Yet we see billions in his account. We know that that is questionable. This is the basis upon which people are accused. You don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing. If I can provide the value of a billionaire, you should not have a problem with billions in my account. Are we together now? Yes. The question I want to ask you is, that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a uh, charm in in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the bible he said we are not like wizards right that peep they peep into the realm of the spirit. There is no accurate knowledge. They summon strange spirits to deliver information for them, which can be aberrated. So he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well. Why should I send my child to her school? Your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence. You don't know that colors are communicators. check shirt check check short knicker that's a school uniform for instance and then you put red or blue socks carelessly done with one tailor who is not competent but is a brother to the principal and so you allow the person to sew anything you see someone very tall and his 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 his, his, his trouser is, is just at, around his lap no excellence what of the teachers? 
the teach i'm not i'm not being insulted but the teachers themselves look at the result of the person teaching them accounting f9 in accounting f9 in maths f9 in economics f9 in commerce he's the chief he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences why because they attend the same church i'm telling you why people fail there is a place for the spiritual but never think incompetence will be substituted for, um, or competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now, it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA uh, uh, parents teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session, but there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city. Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues are we together yes there are men of god i see i know i honor them with my life i know that we are all men of god but i know there are levels and there are standards i will not sit down and say oh this no 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 everybody is clapping for joshua selman the same way they are clapping for me i'm clapping for others too are we together now but this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn there is a saying in house that the person who can ask for road will never get missing the the keys to make us competent are there it just takes meekness but many of us are too embarrassed to improve we are too ashamed to seek knowledge especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us less privileged than us so we don't submit ourselves to listen I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here i'm speaking to you don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying joshua selman you are the lion of the tribe of judah they are destroying you thank god for their uploads but go back and say it's time to walk be committed to personal development you are a businessman you hit your first million you don't cross your leg and say my soul find rest no you say the journey is just about to start thank god for all those things but i need to learn who needs to mentor me who needs to build me champions are champions because they keep moving mediocre are mediocre because they stop moving give yourself to continuous improvement continuous development Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions 
giants in the kingdom will you open up the gates gates open up the doors will you open up the gates Open up the door. Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens. Verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers. It just says they. Certain men. A certain man. Never mentions their names. But mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says bringing one who was sick of palsy which was born of four that means four people carried him four destiny helpers carrying a man it says and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press what did they do they uncovered the roof where he was jesus now and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay verse 5 when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee when you read on he was eventually healed watch this write this down destiny helpers are people who have been anointed assigned and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny anointed assigned by God commissioned when Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called Zarephath he said dear I have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but God told the prophet I have commanded I have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hardworking you are, no matter how competent you are, in the dealings of God with men, a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you. Please come, Shadrach. Shadrach is right at this level. Everybody, please see. Watch this. Call this a level in life. I am up here standing. His desire is to come up here. Now, he has done well. He's played his part. Well suited. But he has the gift, the grace, the anointing, but no access. Are we together now? He needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers. Listen to me. The assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak there are three kinds of destiny helpers please write this quickly three kinds of destiny helpers sorry shadrach you have to stand okay go ahead just just write Number one, the first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. Divine connectors. Please give us from verse 1 to 5. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 5. Learn this. What I'm teaching you is not basic at all. It's not simple at all. It's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants. The first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Who are they? Let me tell you who they are. 
there are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you'll be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen it says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought, listen, away captive out of the land of Israel. Who? A little maid. You see, no name again. No name. Take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector. It says a little maid and she waited upon Naaman's wife. She was a PA to the big man's wife. One day something happened. Next verse she said unto her mistress would god my lord with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said i know i'm a i'm a captive but while i was in israel there is a man i know that that man is powerful i pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet i know he will be healed these are destiny connectors sam i know you have this talent but i was browsing and i saw that there is an international music auditioning i'm not a musician but i thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is in the land thereof verse 5 and the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter, so on and so forth, and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, because the king was afraid, right? And then Elisha said, Let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12. listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage this is where i'm trying to go he was at the point of his breakthrough but in anger he was about to miss his miracle the destiny helper comes again and this and his servants came near and spake to him listen and said my father if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse will you not do it somebody came and spoke to him are we together again and said no no let me encourage you and that man went to bath 
when you read 14 and 15 he bathed seven times and his skin the bible records was like that of a child that of a baby destiny connectors i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that god will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary but they carry extraordinary things are we together now they may be your younger ones they may be children they may not have the ability to bless you but i pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you in the name of jesus christ the second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence mark chapter 15 verse 43 please give it to us very fast let's let's be fast about it mark 15 verse 43 it says joseph of arimathea this was jesus christ now right we, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting i'm reiterating it for so that we can believe josh um, joseph of arimathea an honorable counselor the Bible says, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and used his honor or influence. He went boldly before Pilate and craved for the body of Jesus. Listen, there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men. You need them. A time must come in your life where you will need them. Are we together? Do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job are we together? this lady is looking for a job she's tried and tried but the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it I can use my influence are we together and meet somebody someone like our daddy prof and say daddy please there is a lady here honestly she can be good for a secretary i endorse this lady i know that this lady is good daddy please do you have any friend that can give her a job do you know he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together god bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of, of of zari and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazo has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you may god raise a man of influence to call him and say if you touch my pastor i touch your job influence you need influence in this life you see the people in the world are smarter 
than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it i want god to connect me to politicians to connect me to business people to connect me to diplomats i'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter i'm just a righteous man i have fortified myself i will still be holy with them and i will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom hallelujah when the former president i heard a very funny story i will only say part of it the former president uh, of nigeria did something funny to one prominent um will i call him father elder statesman in nigeria he did something funny to him and um within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so, so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified i'm not just this ah may god make koinonia a place of influence please answer that amen well in the name of jesus christ hallelujah men of influence the key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence not just evangelism that you are surrounded by men that matter so that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence uh -uh. influence gives you a voice the bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength it's, it's a fortification you need men of influence around your life there's too much wickedness who do you know in the army that god can use to speak for you who do you know in the military who do you know in the banking system who has god connected you with in the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before. Once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC, carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. In ABU, you call it third list. But there are many lists according to what influence can bring are we together there are people whose admission letters are printed overnight jam irrespective come on now cut off point nonsense a voice is the cut off point influence and god brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move 
that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of jesus there are many churches in zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy. 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the god that i serve bring them into your life may the god that i serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up he doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a dog that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flashlight and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself, he drove me, sir, with his car. We went to passport office in Abuja, in Kaduna. I even did the first one in Abuja. So it was even complicated. In 30 minutes, how many minutes? About 30 minutes or so, 
they brought out my passport for me and I was ready to go. The woman who did it, the madam there, last year I went to minister in Nigerian immigration, their fellowship, their chapel. When I went there, there was a woman. They had moved her there and quickly I made friends with her because my passport would expire again. Keep laughing at me. Don't lend the wisdom in what I'm saying. Listen, when you see men of influence, don't resent them. You resent them because pastors have taught you. They are all unbelievers. Don't mind them. Mind them. Mind them. Just make sure their influence does not destroy you. But please mind them. Don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that. But the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90 percent of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you they come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent you will hardly find people who love you for who you are but in your life there are men you will find who love you for who you are they will stay with you for time's sake first First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please let's hurry up. First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign. Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen. One of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well. They leave you alone when you are lonely. But there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men. Are we together? Faithful. He said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men verse 2 and everyone that was in distress one that was in debt everyone who was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became what captain over them in a cave how do you submit to a man who is a failure how do you submit to a ministry that does not have result how do you remain loyal to a business that is not working it's called faithfulness there are such men there are such men we were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened and i said they are called faithful men they are not called men of god they are not called assistants they are called faithful men may god position them in your life how many great men in this country have fallen 
and they are left alone there are some of us when our parents were wealthy there were all kinds of relatives now right now there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men there are psycho fans around in our world but there are people called faithful men the bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave 400 people in a cave there was no hope it's not like they were there hoping things would change they were saying if we die let's die with you if you are a leader here please let me give you a secret every time you pray don't just pray for gifted people pray for faithful men a faithful man is better than a gifted man a gifted rebel is not an asset hallelujah verse 3 and then we'll stop and david went thanks to the okay let's just stop there i'm not going to read let me give you the next verse to read first chronicles first chronicles that will tell you the whole story all till but but then we're looking at something else first chronicles 12 let's read 1 to 3 then move to verse 38 first chronicles 12 1 to 3 then 38 let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men look at this he said now these are the men that came to david in Zig in ziklag i'm fast forwarding now he says while he kept himself close because of saul the son of kish he said they were among the mighty men what did he call them helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty, regardless of results. Are we together? He says, they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said, to make David king, their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives because if members know they will run away because they are selfish people but there is a grace i truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man watch the kinds of people you are attracting and don't be too quick to say these people are my friends we even say they are my right hand men a friend is made for adversity adversity separates people you will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart to make David king they threw away their own personal agenda and said David for as long as you are not king we will not rest do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job I will not rest you can call and say Kai, uncle you have tried don't worry god is faithful he said god is faithful i take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia is in Akwaibo, when they captured him dr paul Enenche said he could not sleep because he's not just because he was his spiritual son he said no he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around called his spiritual parents 
Oyedeko, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now. Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to Akwaibom and went to prophesy on that soil and say, I command that my son be released. Faithful men. Is it not enough to pray from your house? When a man leaves his house to your own to help you, it's no longer just friendship. It's called faithfulness. Pray in one minute. Lord, bring faithful men. I'm tired of false people in my life. Take what I'm saying seriously. I'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless. Faithful men. Faithful men. Even when they know what you have done, they say it will never change my relationship with you. Pray. There are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabaka labako sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I like you to pray especially those of us who are trusting god for marriage by the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight you are in trouble by the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell you are in trouble lift your voice and say faithful men faithful men faithful men pray faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me texts and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry. To make sure you prosper. I've seen people like that. With all humility and by the grace of God. One of such people is our daddy here. I remember when um, there was a time that, you know, we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that. Do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly? There are still people here. They, they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry. It's like they are more concerned about it than me. 
I sent a text to a few people telling them we are trusting God to buy land, you know, to, to, to get land and all of that. And one of the women sent and said, I've been waiting for this. She said, I've been waiting for this. Make sure when it starts, my contribution comes in. She said, I will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land. Faithful men. A pastor may have nothing but faithful men. And I tell you, he has more than assets. He may not be able to play the keyboard well, but he's faithful. He will die with you. Are we together? There are people who were once in this ministry. Today they have left. Some of them are abroad. They are the ones spreading koinonia messages around. I don't know them, but they take those messages all around. It's an anointing that is upon this ministry. Faithfulness. I tell you, we don't force people to do anything here. There is a grace. I saw it in certain ministries. I pursued it like a man pursues water. When I found it, I got it and I knew. Many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives. You are not sure of anybody close to you. They will laugh with you now. And when they turn, they can say crucify him. Let me tell you, no matter how careful you are, you cannot make men faithful by yourself. It will take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, if they bring a gun to shoot, they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are there Facebooking people, chatting with people and saying, you are my best friend. You are my best. This. They will leave you. Let me tell you something when the going gets tough. Because in every man's life, there are valleys. There are times of challenge. How many wives left their husbands simply because for one year, there was no money. They packed their load and went. How many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years, she could not give them a child. Faithfulness is important. Don't think I'm joking when, I, when we are saying this. Please, I want you to pray again and say, Lord, in my life, send faithful men. I told you they are anointed. They are commissioned. They are anointed. They are commissioned. They don't just come. They are sent. Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. Number six, please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom results do not just happen there are graces that activate possibilities there is a kind of grace that brings influence there is a kind of grace that brings wealth there is a kind of grace that brings freshness are we together now so that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor that there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results how you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations when a result becomes consistent there is a law and a grace at work number two human beings are god's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces god keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil 
they can just be prophetic contacts but God's instruments God's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what look up did he say shall receive God's reward there is something called a prophet reward is the reward that goes with his office are we together it is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of God it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that I have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg I don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa I've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say Lord send help from Zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship he say close that one and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say Ejimi, please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace I have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated I wish what I were saying were a lie I would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor I used to think service was the cheapest route until I learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of God you receive that reward if I become your friend 
you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of god but if you come as my friend when a jimmy comes to see me whatever i'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating he has he is not going to ask me we will even talk about it he wants malt he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take are we together because we are friends are we together but when we begin to talk we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry when i'm talking to my parents we can crack jokes but when i'm about to say something serious i switch because i'm talking to men who brought me to this world they have an anointing to speak over my life are we together you can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes but when i'm about to talk to him i talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries are we together now that's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones we don't let them just join the queue they sit down these things are communications of honor that's why we provide buses for you after the service it's not just that we have money to throw around no it is to honor you it's a law of honor because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing and most of those anointings we need it and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are walking someone is not walking and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah my roommate what is this for he said i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor Maybe the reason why you are grounded. Hear me, I'm rounding up. You saw a prayer grace in Koinonia. And you felt, please, these guys just pray too loud. They just shout like idiots. I like the excellence. I like the word, but the prayer. And so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away. Because you ignore that grace. It's called the spirit of prayer and supplication. You saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor. Number one, you must believe in God. Number two, you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing. You must not just believe in the person, you must believe in the office, the operation of that anointing. I, I pray for you that you get this. We're about to pray, but you need to get this. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord, for in your presence there is life 
everlasting I will reverence you Lord listen I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry I have I have I have honored them with my life I saw into different TV ministries because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry. I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon. So I plant a seed of honor. Are we together now? Yeah. I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry. Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reverence for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story, and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something honor is not kneeling down lifting your hands you have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry i don't know whether you believe it or not there are many people who never believe it so you will sit down with circles of disfavor whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of god by the grace of god everything we do in this ministry prospers is a grace have you tapped into it is it working for you listen as a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia. And they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Ejimi were watching a man of god one time and i looked at this man of god i said kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know but there is there is an uncommon grace this guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. On common grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. 
honor is not even giving somebody offering it's just a communication the honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open there are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open it doesn't mean I agree with everything they do honestly I don't however I honor them with my life I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, the way God does his thing, self. That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess life is not magic it's not chance as haphazard as it is there is a synergy there is a rhythm to life i pray in the name of jesus christ that you see everything i've been saying it's one thing to hear what i'm saying but it's another thing to see it he says i will stand upon my watch i will set myself upon the tower right he said and i will see what the lord will say to me some of these things i share with you freely I got them from my own mistakes. I got them through pain. I got them through sacrifice. But they are irrefutable laws. Bring any man for me. Walk these laws and watch Satan bow. Watch gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances. I don't care whether it's gates of health. I don't care whether it's gates of ministry, gates of business. There is nothing you are doing. That has not been done before ask those who master this key if he's setting up a company you are not the first to do it if it's marriage you are not the first to do it if it's barrenness you are not the first to be barren the day your light comes that becomes your day of salvation something i have ignored i used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me there was a man of god that set me free just one revelation from him I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And it was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And it gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Hallelujah. We are just going to have three prayer points. I'm going to give us the next five minutes. I like you to blast in tongues. We are going to pray. The secrets of the kingdom. Like Bishop Oyedeko will say. That has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom. Life is not guesswork. Stop guessing. Koinonia. Stop guessing. You can walk circumspectly. By knowledge. By knowledge. By knowledge. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Pray. Pray your ignorance away. Pray your doubts away. 
Bara Pascala Bariara Baraba Mambrata Carato Soto Bridge E Caraba Baba Barada Balada Balada Bash Rababa Catala Barada Balada Ayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
We are going to sing this song one more time. As you sing it, listen. I want you to see yourself like someone coming out of a pit. See yourself coming out of financial pits. See yourself coming out of all kinds of things. Sing it with understanding. The Bible says sing praises with understanding. Sing it and we'll read this scripture and I'll pray for you. I arise and shine. My light is come. Oh, hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. I arise and shine. My light is come. Kaba shatalabakaya. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time. I arise and shine. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, he says shine for your light what i've been teaching you has come all you have been hearing the mysteries that produce champions in the kingdom has come it says and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold it says the darkness shall cover the earth cross darkness the people he said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Verse 3. Hold on. Listen. I like you everywhere you see die. Put my. This is a prophecy for you before I speak over your life. Are you ready? Read it convincingly as a prophetic word. One to read. Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings to my rising. One more time. And Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings. Listen. I have seen this thing in the spirit. I have seen men rise. While I was seeking God for this year, God told me it's a year of multiplied grace and influence. It's not just a name. Brothers and sisters, we are about to round up. We are getting towards the end of the first half. There are signals that I'm beginning to receive in my spirit that men are going to change states like day and night. Believe what I'm telling you. That's why I'm teaching you this. The Lord began to put it in my spirit. It's time for people to change. My own assignment is to teach you this and release the grace. God's assignment is to watch over his word and bring it to pass. Lift your hands as I speak over you. Please, I want you to believe. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. It said, For there shall be a performance. I pray for you. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny by prophecy be open now. I speak to you. Change levels now. 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 I speak to your finances money has a spirit I call you to men now I call you to men now I call forth resources in the name of Jesus hallelujah lift your hands I want to end struggle this life of hardship that many people are going through I pray for you the life of struggle and hardship he said they are taking for a prey and none said restore I command that life of hardship come to an end now come to an end now 
come to an end now come to an end now hallelujah hallelujah I want you to believe in the Lord I want you to believe what I'm saying I want to release favor on you I don't know how to make you believe this thing but brothers and sisters I can kneel down and beg you receive this prayer I'm about to pray for you there is a grace that favors men in this life if you walk your way to destiny you will die young I knock on the door of favor and I pray in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost step into a new dimension of favor right now right now step into strange favor Kabatakarataya. a new dimension of favor a new level of favor like a mantle let it come upon you like a mantle let it come upon you like a mantle let it come upon you hallelujah listen there is a grace for performance at the beginning of this year the Lord told me son there is an anointing I put on your life called grace for performance the anointing that forces things to work it doesn't matter whether it has worked for anybody or not there must be a way around it to work I pray for you I don't know what has refused to work in your life that grace for performance receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah the anointing that calls destiny help us there is a grace like a magnet that draws them wherever they are I place an anointing on you let it call them now help them please help them under the anointing I call I place that grace like a mantle it will come upon you now hallelujah I pray for you everything that has closed your glory so that you are not seen tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel I declare may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see hear me there are people here you get results but you work for everything by yourself everything by yourself I stop that circle in your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah father I pray these six keys that have taught your people the key to activating them in their lives that one is not learned it is received as an impartation I pray for you every one of you under the sound of my voice the activation the key be sensitive to what I'm praying I'm not just talking the key that activates these operations I've taught you in the name of Jesus I stand by this apostolic and prophetic anointing I hand it over to you in the spirit receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus lift your hands and begin to thank God and say I have something receive it through Thanksgiving Lord I expect things to begin to happen in my life I have the knowledge I receive the empowerment in the name of Jesus Christ every time we're gathered before him those outside can you hear me just say hallelujah praise the Lord every time we're gathered before him it's important that we approach him with 
an attitude that believes that he is able to change us please listen it's one thing to come before God and come for a meeting like this just to satisfy a religious ritual a loyalty to a vision and a ministry but it's another thing for our hearts to be open especially for those of us who are just coming for the first time uh, I don't want us to be careless about our approach tonight let your heart be open because the truths that you are about to hear will change you Galatians chapter 2 verse 2 the apostle was speaking he said I went up by revelation I went up by revelation not just by desire it takes more than desire it takes more than sincerity to reign in life our victory in life is upon the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we understand so every time we are gathered before him I like you to know that that is the time to not just hear the word like scripture being quoted but an understanding of the principles of the kingdom hallelujah the word of God represents his wisdom his idea about everything in life when explained when understood when received and mixed with faith there is no power in existence that can stop a performance hallelujah so it's important for our hearts to be open and the second thing that we have to do tonight is that as you listen to the word of god open up your spirit most especially along the area where you are trusting god to see the word manifest some of us are fine with other areas the bible says naaman was a great man he was the captain of the syrian army but so when it came to warfare when it came to his rulership he was okay but his health there was an attack upon his health so as you listen to the word of god pay attention to the area that concerns you hallelujah praise the lord i want to welcome again everyone especially those who have come from far all our lovely people from um, university of abuja wave your hands god bless you wow wow let's honor them let's bless them thank you your life will never be the same in the name of jesus you will carry strange dimensions of grace and go back with it hallelujah one of the the principal advocacies of this ministry is the understanding that until a man encounters god please listen until you have a personal encounter with the god of the bible your christian experience is barren useless deceitful and destructive now listen i chose my words very intelligently barren useless deceitful and then ultimately destructive because the danger of approaching spiritual things without a true encounter is that we will have a form of godliness hallelujah but then we will deny its power we will have a lot of concepts that we believe came from the bible with no corresponding grace to demonstrate their validity so with time our christian experience will become a mockery on ourselves because we will make bold claims about a god we do not know talk audaciously about a kingdom we do not understand and attempt to to live by principles we do not fully grasp none of these things will produce results in our lives then at the end we'll find out that our faith is the same with those who never sought god from the beginning so it is important that as we seek to rise to levels of strength and grace in the spirit our approach must be according to patterns hallelujah one of the things again that we teach in this place um, are the mysteries of the kingdom i am absolutely convinced that the growth and 
the level of leadership and excellence of every believer is tied not just to his knowledge of God but his comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom you hear me say this all the time the mysteries of the kingdom hold the key to dominion in this kingdom there is no other way of exercising kingdom dominion hallelujah whether it is prosperity whether it is walking in the anointing of the holy spirit whether it is leadership influence whatever system of the kingdom you want to approach they function by laws everybody say laws and um all that we do in this place is number one to keep progressing in our encounter the knowledge of the person jesus and then to understand the principles of the kingdom and then to release an impartation grace upon us to be able to demonstrate that these things we believe are not just stories so when you come for koinonia you expect an encounter with the person christ that encounter has nothing to do with my teaching while i am teaching christ is revealing himself to people are we together now then the principles of the kingdom the keys that produce stars and champions in the kingdom and then an impartation a transference of grace the implication of that is that the transference is what is responsible for activating possibilities in your life that you have not seen that result in your life does not mean it's not available it says you will arise and shine when your light comes hallelujah so expect encounters expect revelation understanding accurate dispensing of the principles of god and the goal of the teaching of the principles of god is to do three things number one to challenge our paradigms our understanding to influence our convictions to the end that we lay aside every understanding that is not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom if the word of god cannot gain ascendance to a point where it challenges your understanding and corrects something you know i have so much passion for the understanding of the word of god because in my opinion it is god's justice and mercy to remedy for the inadequacies that came with our backgrounds so i may have had a background that was not very very favorable polygamous family perhaps or a family that has been ravaged by witchcraft and all of that and an option was never given to me to choose whether i want to be part of that system or another now when the word of god comes it leaves you with a choice to correct faulty foundations and set a new course for yourself your children the generation that will come after you or continue in that error and perish hallelujah the bible says there remained a rest for the people of god hebrews chapter 4 right began to talk about the rest they are the people of god but there is still a dimension of rest they are yet to enter and he says let us therefore labor to enter that rest hallelujah so let your let your attention be very intentional you must commit yourself i was very touched when i got information that these gentlemen and ladies were coming all the way from abuja they came all the way with their boss you know came to pay the price for an encounter that's called commitment it's more than desire it's called commitment are we together and um first timothy chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 down to 16 he says meditate on these things what things the truths that have been taught you meditate on these things then he says give yourself wholly not half-heartedly wholly to them he says that your profiting will appear unto men 
that means your profiting will never appear unto men until there is a level of commitment are we together now yes commitment has always been one of the keys to mastery when you commit yourself you commit your potentials your time your resources and then your results will be commensurate to the commitment hallelujah faith is the name given to your partnership with god as far as the delivery of your expectations are concerned there is a partnership there is a role that you have to play he said good master what must i do to be saved it is within your power to save me but what is my role what must i do to be saved hallelujah scripture says if ye be willing and obedient then it says you will eat the good of the land the good will not come to you just because you have desire there must be willingness there must be obedience there is a path you either follow that path or you remain where you are it says ask for the ancient path you don't have to create one there is ask for the ancient paths hallelujah I teach you these truths because I want your life to produce results. You see, we do not serve God just because of results. However, at a point in your Christian experience, these results validate your pursuit, they motivate you, and they serve as consolations to your Christian experience. When Jesus saw the fig tree without fruit, he cursed it. He said, no man eats from you from hence. And it withered so when a believer's life becomes an episode of failure after failure defeat after defeat pain after pain tragedy after tragedy there is need to not just probe your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ but probe your understanding of the systems of the kingdom because the operation of God is systemic there are systems everybody say systems say it one more time systems there is the governmental system of the kingdom it is the dimension of the operation of the kingdom that is responsible for allotting rankings and responsibility is God's system of authority is the system of God that is responsible for promotion responsible for the distribution of offices is his governmental system there is the economic system of the kingdom that is responsible for the allotment of the welfare of the citizens. So you can excel in an understanding of a dimension and be unfruitful in another dimension. Are we together? You can be an excellent preacher yet be a very terrible father, a terrible husband. Are we together? You can tap into the dimension of the spirit that is responsible for success and achievement and yet fail as far as your personal spiritual growth is with God. You can be anointed by tapping into the principles that open the gates of the anointing but then crash eventually because you have not been open to the dimension that brings in you the character to sustain that anointing so it's not only important to open yourself to one dimension of the kingdom you must study the systems of the kingdom there's no magic about excelling in this kingdom it's an intentional formula an encounter first please listen in this order never begin to study the systems of the kingdom without an encounter with the person christ that's what leads to mysticism and scientology are we together an attempt to explore the principles of the kingdom outside of an encounter with the person christ in this kingdom everything revolves around jesus christ listen if at any point you are found attempting to explore anything about the kingdom outside of the supervision of jesus christ you are already in error and that's what we call witchcraft he says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you so up front before 
we explore the mysteries of the kingdom, I need to balance this because there is such appetite, especially for we, the younger people, there is such appetite for exploring not just the mysteries of the kingdom, but anything mystical. We, we have grown progressively in this craze for anything that is not widespread information. So, the understanding that all power belongs to God has erroneously authorized many people to now explore anything. So, we read zodiac signs, we read uh, the books of Moses, we read all kinds of the, um, and, um, um, astrology and all kinds of ancient Babylonian Scientology. We mix everything together because we believe in our folly that we can get the correct part of the information and then by our strength balance it. Are we seeing now? So we are attempting to explore realities in the kingdom outside of the direction and the supervision of Christ. This is the difference between what I'm teaching you and a lot of junks that a lot of people try to teach. So there is obsession. When they come out in the morning and they see that the cloud is red, they want to give a, a, an astrological and then spiritual explanation. So that obsession for mysticism, every time the word of, the, of God is dispensed with simplicity, those kinds of people reject it. The moment the word is too simple, they say, no, I need something deep. Meaning, I need something surrounded with a lot of mysticism. And oftentimes, we men of God use mysticism to cover for our foundational inferiority and complex. We come from backgrounds where we have hardly been believed. And so we find succor on the strength of possessing informations that are not public. So when we dispense these informations in our minds, we feel we are respected on the strength of our mysticism. So we pride ourselves. The more mystical we look, the happier we are with ourselves. That's not the way the kingdom works. Are we together? When Jesus came, when he taught the word, children understood him. Adults understood him. Intellectuals understood him if this was designed to reach the whole world then there must be a system of simplicity that surrounds its operation let me tell you the truth over 70 percent of the informations that are being promoted in church are unnecessary for the growth and the excellence of a believer's life trust me the more you know christ the more you see how useless certain informations are that we punish ourselves to believe that until we know these things he said that i may know him so it starts with knowing him then the power of his resurrection the realities that accompany that person the beginning the foundation of a christian journey is not access to mysteries it will lead you into occultism the foundation of a christian's journey is an encounter with the person christ not the kingdom the person of jesus christ not the holy spirit the person of jesus christ not an angel not the 24 elders not the four living creatures none of these things have the ability to give you is like a compass so the, you know when, when you stand to measure your weight or whatever it is calibrated to zero and it must be calibrated to zero for you to have a correct measurement that's how it is jesus is the beginning he shows you the correct pathway to start your journey now the trouble is there are so many people who teach a lot of mysticisms in the body of christ without a personal revelation of the person christ that was the mistake of Isaiah. From chapter 1 to 5, he was teaching, prophesying, dispensing the realities of the kingdom. But in chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. When he saw the Lord, at once, he no longer was interested in ministry. Can you imagine? A man who hitherto was happy to be a prophet. 
he said woe is me i am undone in other words i need to reset this spiritual curriculum altogether please hear me koinonia hear me and be wise do not ever make a mistake of thinking god will grant you grace and access to people on the strength of mysticism are we together that you can bring a lot of mysticism and explain how moses learned the babylonian intelligence and explain all of those things and come up with archaeological intelligence none of these things in themselves sustain the ability to produce effect you see we do these things and we mock ourselves in church the sick still remain sick the oppressed still remain oppressed in fact at the end of our teaching those who were once confident that they love god do not even know what they believe again no that's not the way it works there should be a level of certainty he said i know whom i have believed i'm not confused i didn't meet an angel i know whom i believe he said and i am persuaded hallelujah i watch preachers and and you know i love the body of christ but then i watch preachers sadly and i see how a number of people become gullible this craze and passion for mysticism any pdf material anything at all that can make you mystical is we pride ourselves around it are we together then we come up with all kinds of teachings the title of my teaching is the reason why michael is called michael now i'm not i'm not being cynical but it's funny how we waste people's time and demons laugh at our stupidity as they watch us do the things we do jesus said this when he was sending the disciples he said heal the sick cast out devils raise the dead cleanse the lepers he said preach the kingdom is that true he sent them with a specific knowledge you see there are all kinds of information on earth but not all of them are relevant for our spiritual growth and development there is a dimension of spiritual knowledge called forbidden knowledge it is not within the curriculum that is given to our dispensation in other words attempting to access it is a waste just like there are certain kinds of knowledge that our dispensation is not yet qualified to receive when this is done then we will have access to eat of that tree of life it wasn't to satisfy hunger it was to reveal a dimension of christ the great prophet of god william branham i honor him so much even in his death towards the end of his life fell into this error i'm trying to correct for you william branham stepped into a dimension of the prophetic that only few people have stepped in it's called the creative dimension of prophecy where he would sit in a forest and watch squirrels be created out of thin air and walk just like elisha the prophet but then towards the end he became philosophical in his approach towards god and he started coming up with a lot of teachings there are people today called the brahamites those who subscribe to the ideology of william branham a great man but towards the end of his life he brought a lot of erroneous teachings are we together now yes there's no point telling us some of those teachings but then it was him that began to propose how that cain was the son of the serpent he gave a teaching that the serpent also slept with eve so adam came i mean abel came from adam and cain came from the serpent you see that was his idea and there are all kinds of other teachings great men and women of god around the world but attempting to come up with a lot of teachings that by the time you come around those teachings they will make you diabolic you will no longer see sense in the laws of god it's as if there is a level of haphazardness and discretion in the dealings of God. No, it's not that way. There is a formula that defines the dealings of God with man. Hallelujah. 
tonight I want to teach you something that has blessed me I've taught these principles across in our external ministrations but I just realized that I've not done that teaching here in the house and the Holy Ghost began to put it in my heart that I should teach it and so I'm going to be teaching us tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Matthew 13 verse 11 please Shabako Sabranda Kariata Katabalada Hallelujah. In your name we will rise. I don't know. You reign on In your name we will rise. I don't know. You reign Sing it as a prophecy. In your name, I will rise. I don't know. You ain't no know. One more time. It's in your name, we will rise. I don't know. Matthew 13 verse 11 I like us to read one to read he answered and said unto them because it is given sorry it's not projected we really apologize let's take it again one to read 13 verse 11 because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but unto them it is not given change the word mystery to secrets ready read it again one to read please look up these truths are called secrets not because God does not want them known. Are we together? The idea of the principles of the kingdom being called secrets has nothing to do with God's um, God's wanting to hide them from people. No. They are called secrets only because the operation of those principles will require the presence of the Holy Spirit to help you understand. He said it is given to you in the kingdom. You who have encountered Christ, it has been given unto you. It's part of the privileges of submitting to the Lordship of Christ. To know, have access to the mysteries of the kingdom. It says, but to them, who are the them? Those who are without. Those who have willfully ignored the person of Jesus Christ. It said to them, that access has not been given. But to you, it has been given say in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus it has been given unto me to know to understand to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom it has been given to me to understand the systems of the kingdom and I will understand I will master these laws and i will reign in life listen ladies and gentlemen i give you a guarantee please hear me i give you a guarantee if you pay attention to these truths your life will look like a god upon the earth believe me the laws of the kingdom are not emotional they don't have any tribal affiliations or sentiments to them you're not going to say because i'm a northerner or because i'm from the south or east no God is no respecter of persons. Any and everyone at all who will open up himself or herself and pay attention to these truths 
will rise like an edifice out of any kind of obscurity in the name of Jesus Christ there are six laws that have changed my life six principles that I have taught and shared there are so many but in recent times I found myself advocating these things and helping the body of Christ understand these principles I'm going to run through them very quickly and then we'll pray hallelujah three things will happen to you as I teach number one is that you will have all kinds of encounters number two the Lord will grant you understanding I sincerely pray for you that you will have understanding the Bible says and open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture meaning until God opens your understanding you will keep hearing stories hallelujah and then number three the supply of grace will come upon your life that ability of the Holy Spirit that enhances performance may that be your portion in the name of Jesus for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high hallelujah number one is the law that is responsible for unusual grace please listen in the life of a man what principle makes men so powerful i have met men in my life and i've heard of others i have followed others who are extremely powerful there is a strong manifestation of the hand of god and the grace of god upon their lives and I have seen others who love God sincerely. But I have not seen as much grace. Is it just an election of grace? Or is there a pathway a man can follow to the end that you will access heavy dimensions of the hand of God? There is. There is. And I want to show you. Praise the Lord. It's called the law of complete surrender. Please write it down. Complete surrender. This is the first mystery in the kingdom I want to teach you. The secret of unusual grace. Heavy anointings upon men. Men who have access to territories. There is a mystery that governs that operation. It's called complete surrender. The source of my strength now you. The strength of my life my hope and my joy now you my confidence now you you're the source of my strength now you the strength of my life now you my hope and my joy now you my confidence now you so I Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Except God be with him. What you see in this ministry is the finger, the very finger of God. And we give him all the praise and to him be all the glory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. Let's continue. Matthew 16 verse 25 Matthew 16 verse 25 I'm establishing the law of complete surrender Matthew 16 
verse 25. For whosoever, now listen, I want to establish a law. Whosoever will save his life shall what? Lose it. But whosoever will lose his life, listen, for my sake, not for foolishness, not as a result of drinking beer and a car knocks you down. Whosoever to show how much he's passionate about me will lose his life. He says he will gain it. Please listen. In this kingdom, we rise up by losing things. You do not gain things and rise. The extent to which you rise in power the extent to which you rise in grace is called the sacrifice of death. Death to yourself. Death to your ambitions. Death to your appetites and desires. Death to a life of sovereignty outside of the Christ. The more you die to yourself, the more your flesh is crucified at the cross, the more you are able to tap into untold dimensions of spiritual power. Listen. Every man defines the limit of his spiritual possibility as far as accessing the power of God is concerned. I may love God. You may love God. Listen. The difference between both of us is not just the election of grace alone. But our individual willingness to lay down what defines relevance outside Christ. For the sake, he says, this one thing I do, forgetting everything that is behind. He didn't say forgetting bad things. Everything. Jesus became Lord and Christ by his ability to lay down his glory his reputation, Philippians 2 from verse 5 to 10. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? Who, although he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery. Co-equal in power. But, he laid aside that glory, that grace, and became a man. That would have been enough humiliation. And then the Bible says, he now died the death of a sinner the death being a cause then he says wherefore on the strength of losing his life his personal relevance when jesus came to the earth it was enough for him to say look i am everything but even being humiliated as a man he still submitted to the governing authority of his father he said i can of my own do nothing the word of God speaking the word that created the heavens and the earth he said I can of my own do nothing he said as I see my father do sacrifice so many of us may never get to this realm of power although we may fast although we may pray it's not just by fasting and prayer there is a point you must come to where you will say like John in John 3.31 that I may decrease. Listen. That he may increase. There are some of you looking at me here. If you had one tenth of the results that God has blessed this ministry with, God will never see your face again. You see. As I'm speaking to you, make sure you are hearing the Lord talk to you. Absolute surrender where you have no desire whatsoever to build titles for yourself god is my witness i've said this for years and i'm still saying it i have no desire whatsoever to build an empire joshua selman apostle joshua selman the great man of god the anointed man of god no I have only one desire to see his kingdom come and that my life becomes a mirror not showing myself but revealing an ability greater than me 
over 70 percent of those who have been blessed by this ministry have never seen me face to face some of you this is the first time you are seeing me face to face you know why because it has always been my desire for christ and him alone to be exalted as a person i'm useless and unnecessary to your spiritual growth i am only necessary on the strength of number one the election of grace and the privilege of representing the person christ that's where i draw my relevance from i'm aware of that so at no point in my christian experience and my journey in ministry will i ever declare independence wanting people to know me outside of the christ but for many of us hidden in our fastings hidden in our prayers hidden in our night vigils hidden in our attending seminars and reading books is such an appetite for for being honored and recognized to an extent that it doesn't matter whether christ is glorified or not we have such desire to be celebrities in the kingdom you are not a celebrity by writing songs and producing albums and doing the way they do in the world you are a celebrity to the degree to which you die and no man sees you they only see the christ it's a realm called galatians 2 20. i have been crucified with christ please listen nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me it says and the life that i live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me please hear me quit this desire for vain glory self-glorification i'm not saying do not desire honor it is part of the system of the kingdom to honor those who represent christ well he said let them that rule well be given double honor are we together but if that is the foundation of your pursuit and then you now write songs because you want to be a celebrity and show frank edwards and the rest that they are not the only ones you know and sometimes we men of god teach these things sincerely in church but we do not realize we are destroying people in an attempt to motivate people and spur them towards excellence we try to give them an idea that there is an inner giant within them that giant is outside christ wake that sleeping giant and what many people mean is look you can rise outside of partnership with christ only know these laws the foundation of the relevance of the christian is tied to christ don't forget this at no point in your life will your independence from god favor you at no point in john 21 jesus was speaking to peter and he gave him what i define to be the hallmark of spiritual maturity he said when you are young come when you are young in the kingdom you are allowed to go and do everything you want to do but the older and the more mature you become he says someone will hold your hands and will take you even to places you do not want dependence is the hallmark of maturity in the spirit independence and rebellion are communications of self-centeredness and carnality the more matured you become in the kingdom the more your hands will have to be held submission defines maturity in the kingdom thank you hallelujah i have learned this law and it has blessed me never you see a man who has donated himself to god and think that man is at a disadvantage you are joking except if the man did it religiously or he did it carnally or in the course of his journey he was weary and did not finish i have not found one man from scripture who left all to commit himself to the purposes of christ listen i have not found one man who took his life as a trophy and say lord find glory in this life and was not relevant when god called abraham a traditional worshiper in a land called or of the chaldeans in genesis chapter 12 
he called Abraham and he said I will make you a great nation and all of that and then he says come out of your father's house in other words come into a life come into a life of dependence and at the end he turned a man to a nation the same thing he did for Gideon the same thing he did for Moses the same thing he will do to any man you've heard me say it and I will repeat it tonight the Lord told me years ago he said if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you because in God's mind it doesn't make any difference whether the virtues are with him or with me the allegiance does not change so God can commit to you what is in his hands because he knows that it is still his own in your hands this attitude of ownership you will never hear me say my ministry no my ministry this are till today you've heard me say it again and again i am and, and a lot of people have felt bad i still feel my body still shakes to look at someone and call my son in the gospel a lot of people have said you've never called me son you've never called me daughter because to call someone son or daughter it it, it even looks like I'm, I'm i'm embarrassing myself because compared to where god wants me to be i'm only a step out of the cave yet some of you this is the hallmark of your ministry there is such appetite to surround people with everybody including your father and mother and everybody they are your sons and daughters and we pride ourselves in it this is my church of 20 members they are all my children no i'm showing you a principle that will change your life in everything my business so you pay the bills and it kills you my business he said let it not be deuteronomy chapter 18 that when thou art built these houses from verse 14 down to 18 right and you have done this and that that you say my power and the strength of my hands has given me this he said but thou shall remember the lord your god why because you can forget let me tell you success can erode the place of god in the life of a man it's god speaking to us oh god i want power i want the miraculous grace you know i see people i receive all kinds of text messages from people I remember I think two weeks ago one gentleman came uh, was it two weeks or so he came from I don't know which city he sent me a text he said apostle I'm coming to throw everything you carry that he wants a, a quad I think it's um, four is what quadruple right portion and I laughed I said look at look at this boy just kidding himself because you think you can inherit sacrifice you can't inherit death it's, it's a path he said verily verily i say unto you except a wheat falls to the ground that's not a gift that's a reward except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone i can release grace upon you but i cannot give you my secret place i cannot give you the priority i can only pray that grace be supplied and help you understand my convictions but it will be up to you to say lord this is my job my wife my children my ministry my career i love all of them but i push all of them behind to make you first not just that find a place and and wage yourself in the midst of these things so you have your career usually money is the first money then wife then children then husband then god then politics then something he's just somewhere in the list the jealousy of god will fight anything above him in your life even if he's the one who gave you he will fight it it is his idea that everything in your life only finds relevance to the degree to which it is behind him so your gifts and talents are only relevant to the degree to which he is above them your prosperity is only relevant to the degree to which he is above them is god speaking to us open your mouth and pray in one minute and say lord i make you my priority please pray my priority not an instrument of relevance 
Lord, you are my priority. Are you praying, Koinonia? My priority. Not money. Not fame. Not marriage. Not children. Not education. They are all important. Don't get me wrong. But they are useless the moment Christ is not above them. Believe me. Sooner or later, you will learn the vanity of life outside of Christ. He, is, he does not add taste to life. He gives it meaning. Jesus Christ is not the salt of the earth. Jesus Christ is life. He does not add taste to your life. No. Jesus Christ does not add. He introduces life to you. He said this is the testimony. That God has given us eternal life. Then he says and this life is in his son. He who has the son has eternal life. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Never give God your remaining time. You spend your time looking for money, looking for wife, husband, children. Then eventually you feel guilty because usually you will not get any much result. So you now run to Christ and say, okay, God, I know that you are not happy with me. Let me give you one day. No. It's not about giving God one day of a retreat. God does not want one day. He doesn't even want once a week. He wants everything. If he's not Lord of all, then everything that stands his way is your God. Praise the Lord. Is God speaking to us? The law of absolute surrender. Jeremiah 29, please. 13 and 14. What are the benefits of God being a priority in the life of a man? Jeremiah 29, when you read from verse 13, it says... And ye shall seek me, listen, and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Sincerely speaking, please hear me. Look up, look up. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This half-hearted commitment towards God that we do one leg in and one leg out. When it's favorable, I love him. When it's not favorable, I don't love him. You will never find the God I serve that way. You must give him everything completely. It can't be God and something else. No. The, the might and the jealousy of God puts him in a class all by himself. Are we together? He says you will find me only when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart with all your heart the problem is we are not seeking God with all our hearts we are seeking what he can give a number of us are gathered here if I begin to prophesy now and I say oh stand up your name is this this and that many of us will be happy and say thank God I came for today's service you see because that's really what you want man of God what is my problem what do I do about it so we have created all kinds of systems in the body of Christ to cover our half-hearted following God are we together we follow God half-heartedly when demons start oppressing us we look for a man quickly and just drop money and because the man needs the money he will not rebuke you he will now collect it and say go it is done it's not done let me tell you it is not done you will go back and those spirits will oppress you because this what you are giving is bribe there is no amount of seed you give a man of God that will cover the place that only your total commitment to God. Are we together? Yes. And pastors, stop collecting money from people and watching their spiritual lives go down and tell them, go, it is done. I'm telling you now, if anybody has told you that it is not done, there is a lot more to do. Sow your seed. Bless a man of God. But don't come to bribe a man. To say, oh, man of God, pray for me. Me too. I, I'm so busy. You know, we are not like you. We really don't have that time to pray. If you don't have the time to pray, you don't have the time to live. If you don't have the time to study the word and know God, then please pray.
pray that your life will be given to someone who is serious with God so that at least maybe you can go to heaven or so. But when you are in this earth, you live by the systems of the king. Hallelujah. Nothing irritates me like seeing young people who are not passionate about God. You see a guy stand and then you hear him talk and there is nothing kingdom in his conversation. No love for God. Man of God, how are you? May God bless you in this missionary journey. He doesn't even know. He, he's trying to use Christian languages to look spiritual. He says, as you are helping us in this vineyard, in this world. Where did you keep what? Nothing in the kingdom has altered your communication. But they know every song. They know every show. They know everything. That's the person saying he doesn't have time. They know every football team. Right? They know the winners of UEFA Champions League. They are hoping that cashless, uh, MasterCard cashless will take them to the finals of UEFA Champions League. They are hoping all these things will happen and they have no knowledge of God. Tell me one scripture where God said he will prosper you. You don't know. But you are there advocating for a man who will never tell you thank you. You see, we have to straighten our thinking. Please hear me. God is not a herbalist. A herbalist is not concerned about relationship. He's only concerned about practices. You don't even need to know the name of the herbalist. He just says, turn around drop your chicken, drop your goat, drop the money, go. It is done. You don't know his name. But when you come to God and say, God, I stretch my hands, he pushes your hand away and says, give me your heart. Let's start with your heart before we talk about your hand. Hallelujah. Number two. The second key secret of the kingdom i'll be sharing with you tonight we'll have to hurry up it's found in proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 please let's hurry up proverbs 23 verse 7 i'll read it for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart there can also be translated mind so is he for as he thinketh in his heart please look up so is he there is a law in the kingdom that realities are first formed within and from the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical. Please listen. That your life is only a looking mirror. And when you want to alter the course of your life, you don't alter it by changing things physically. You alter it by changing something within. Are we together? Imagine that this projector is a big mirror. And you saw yourself and maybe there was dust on your face. And then you are trying to chuck your hand in the mirror to clean the dust. Is that wisdom? That's the same thing that you are doing when you try to correct something in your life physically. Without correcting it from your mind. Because everyone, every one of you under the sound of my voice is a slave to your conditioning. Your paradigm, your ideology. Are we together now? I'm doing what I'm doing right now because there are certain sets of convictions that make me believe that this is the way to live a relevant life. Are we together? When a gentleman sacks his jeans down and holds ego in his hand, it's not just that there is a spirit oppressing him. There is a mindset. Are we together? There is an understanding within him that defines success to him and lets him know that if you want to succeed, these are the things you do. So he's a slave. You see, the body is an obedient instrument. The body will obey your convictions 100%. Your body will move you only in the direction of your convictions. Sadly, not your intentions. So you may be hearing what I'm saying now. You want to change, but there is a conviction in you that would not allow you change. Listen, this is why people remain poor. This is why people remain sick. This is why people remain failures. They hear the word and they're, ah, I'm happy I've had this word. But that was just their intention. Their true conviction 
is still working from their village what took 20 years to become a stronghold in your mind is God speaking to us so when you come to the kingdom as the word of God is being taught you know what I'm doing to you there is a replacement going on in your mind are we together new ideas that are now consistent with the way of God are superimposing the ideas that came from culture the ideas that came from the our being victimized by reason of our post-colonial the side effect of being under the colonial rule that mindset of servitude as the word of God is coming is bringing new ideas and all of a sudden your concepts are changing you who would have been rebellious about the things of God now can sit down in church just like they gave the testimony our Abuja people right how that someone who was not in the faith is now sitting down and burning for God three years ago that person had a conviction an ideology that informed him otherwise or her otherwise and now they found something you listen when you get born again the next assignment of the Holy Spirit is to take the principles of the Word of God in partnership with your obedience and that there be a progressive replacement of wrong paradigms wrong ideologies are we together if you are smoking there is an understanding making you do it the issue is not to say stop smoking you cannot stop until the paradigm is changed and the spirit that keeps that paradigm effective leaves you when a man beats his wife something told him that's the way to keep your wife obedient and usually he would have interacted with people from his village and they said the way we, we have done this before you were born don't let ladies talk nonsense when they do anything beat the living daylight out of them do it once twice maybe three times or four and i'm telling you you have everything settled so you you are born again but you carry your village with you god wants to open you up to a beautiful life maritally but your village is interrupting it please i like you to make a commitment that you will have no loyalty to any mindset that is not of the christ no matter how long you've held on to it when you come before the lord you must lay it down in the name of jesus christ do you know why we resent ourselves and we hate our cultures i'll tell you why we hate people from different cultures because of what we think comes with the culture are we together a prevalent mindset so if i say a man from plateau state or kaduna state or kogi state or Ibom, or lagos or an Igbo man we associate these people with certain things ranging from irresponsibility to anger to loss for money to pride and so on and so forth to promiscuity but those things are ideologies they are conditionings listen the kingdom is another culture greater than your culture you can choose to remain an Igbo man or become a citizen of the kingdom you can choose to remain a northerner together with the strings of irresponsibility associated with our territory or you can come into the kingdom and let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus are we together conditioning so you love God but that mindset of being a champion is still eating you up so the moment you are in church and a man of God is preaching you try to outshine them that one is not God you are anointed but you are still a victim of a conditioning that you are only a celebrity when you are the only one doing what you are doing so you push every other person and make sure nobody has an, an opportunity to grow listen please hold on do you know that many of us pastors some of the things we introduce to members that we brag about and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that told us it's not the Holy Spirit there is where the Holy Spirit stopped and our villages continued but we mix everything and say it was the Holy Spirit are we together I can be angry and call you stupid and instead of accepting that look 
this, this one is a spirit. This is not the Holy Ghost. But I'll say, look, it's, it's just the zeal of the Lord. What do you expect? I have an apostolic anointing. Instead of being humble to admit, are we together now? Yes. Or the moment God reveals to me that you have one million in your account, I'm supposed to pass. He didn't say I should talk to you. But something in my territory that, that stimulates an appetite for material gain, this one has nothing to do with God again. I took advantage of prophetic access and saw one million. And I'm drawn by my lust. Now you won't know because the atmosphere is heavy. People are falling under the anointing. So you assume it's God that is doing it. And I walk up to you and say, young man, stand up. You have one million. Hi! Hey! Say yes. Exactly one million. Yes. It came last week. Yes, go and send it to my account quickly. Now listen. I will, I will be so bold about it. You will never believe it came from me. I say, look, don't think I'm looking for your money. Just go and do this thing for your own good. And the guy will run and transfer it. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Now, does that mean, it doesn't mean I don't love the Lord. But there is a mindset that is mixing with ministry. Are we together? And if it wants, it must change. That's why there are people who don't mind getting anything. You love God. But then eventually, when there are bills that need to be paid, you will create some kind of prophetic platform and say, where are so, 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 and so people who must do A and B and C and we make it look like it was God. No. Those ministries are suffering because of their lack of understanding the financial principles of the kingdom. And they will have to manipulate a system to cover up for their lapse of not understanding one system of the kingdom. Please, I'd like you to pray for one minute. And say, Lord, any conditioning in me that is responsible for my failure, no matter how long I've held on to it, let it go tonight. Please pray. Pray. I'm sharing with you principles that will change your life. Please pray. Some of you, that's why you may never enter a godly relationship. Any relationship you enter, you love God. You are tongue talking. But there is an understanding you have about relationship, about marriage. That will never allow you be in a meaningful relationship. Some of you do not have friends. Because there is a thinking. There is a paradigm. It came with your village. The validity. The lifespan of any good friend in your life is two weeks. Something you do will drive them away. Take responsibility and pray. Stop saying it's just demons. Pray. And say Lord. I realize that your word says. To guard my heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life regardless of my village and my territory regardless of where i come from there is a behavioral pattern that is tied to inferiority i have never realized that i'm behaving that way because there is a hidden sense of low esteem low self-esteem I have brought it into ministry. I have brought it into business. I have brought it into my home. And it's destroying my home. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Some of us are very cynical. We are very critical. You criticize everybody. You are a sadist. Your communication is always on the negative. Take responsibility. And accept tonight that there is a mindset that is making you behave that way. And cry to the Lord for change. Don't say we are all like that in our family. Pray. There is a mindset that keeps you greedy. There is a mindset that makes you not to be a giver. There is a mindset that makes it look like tithing. is a gimmick from men of God to collect your money and you remain poor. There is a mindset that makes you think your entire finances will come from salary and is killing you right now. Pray and say, Lord, any understanding, any paradigm I have held on to that is not consistent with your path, I, I become disloyal to it tonight. Hallelujah. Number three. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 7. 
Is God blessing us already? Please lend these keys and use them. And watch the mountains before you melt like wax before the fire. Hallelujah. Some years ago, I found out, listen, that every time I had challenges in my life, any kind of challenge, it was difficult for me to manage it. I didn't know what to do. As a leader, whenever I was faced between decisions, very major decisions, I didn't know how to manage some of the confusions that I experienced until I found what I'm about to teach you. If you learn what I'm about to teach you now, every time you are confused, you will find your way out. Ready? Proverbs chapter 3, please, from verse 5. Learn this. The third law, the key to receiving divine strategies from God, the key to receiving supernatural direction, a way out of a, a situation that should eat you and destroy your life, that when men say, this is it, there is no way out. Hear me, people of God, there is a way out if you know what to do. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right? It says, and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse is where the key is. In all your ways. How many? How many? In all your ways. It says, acknowledge him. What is the blessing behind that process? And he shall direct until that experience happens your path is crooked it says whenever you get to a point in your life where there is no way out humanly there is a key the key is to acknowledge him i know it looks simple until you apply it are we together let me tell you how to acknowledge someone i know that i've given this example but please say jimmy stanza look at this if this guy is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar bank. Are we together? And he has come in our midst right now. And I want to introduce him. Listen, let me show you how to acknowledge a man. I would start something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, in our midst today, we are privileged to have a Jimmy Adegbe here. In 1998, he got a award for most innovative entrepreneur. In 1999, he got award for the most customer-driven company. In 2005, he got, I begin to list all his achievements. Listen, are we together now? And then I'll tell you, look, it's a privilege to have him here. Please, everyone, we cannot continue until we recognize this rare gem with a standing ovation. Celebrate this person. I have acknowledged him. Let me tell you what that does. It puts pressure on him to repeat what you just acknowledged. Are we together now? I cannot say he got this award, this award, and I say, please come and tell us good evening. And then he comes up and blows his credentials. Have you seen people you honored come on stage and you see how they are under pressure to preserve the honor you have given them? Your honoring and acknowledging them put pressure on them to represent. That's what you do to God. So when I get to a crossroad where there is no way out and men say like David in Psalm 3, he said many a day that rise up against me. Many a day that say where is his God? All of a sudden you forget about the problem and you say where is the God that parted the Red Sea with his nostrils? You are acknowledging him. Are we together? You start listing the things he did. That's what David did to Goliath. Where is the God that delivered me from the bear? Where is the God that delivered me from the lion? And he was putting pressure on the integrity of God. In other words, God, your name is about to go to the mud. And I am shouting it before men that you are the one that did it before. And all of a sudden, he shall make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. I show you a secret of endless victory because you see as you rise 
there are many people who will pray for your downfall not because they hate you your rise is equivalent to their failures because it kills every excuse and so in their minds they will be hoping things will go bad to justify that your success is nothing special and at a point you will be at a crossroad when you get to that point then you will open your mouth and begin to worship him and call him all kinds of names it's a secret I've learned. I will shut the door for one hour, two hours. I'm just worshiping him. And say, Lord, I thank you. I remember at so, so, so time when you came through for me. I will sing of your mercies. I remember the day when I did not have five naira. Is it today that I need one million that you cannot give me? I'm acknowledging him. I, I mount pressure on his integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what you should do. You mount pressure on God's integrity by acknowledging him before the forces of darkness. He healed you of HIV. Now cancer wants to destroy you. And people say, you know, I've always suspected this person was not healed. This koinonia, people just come and lie on stage here. HIV healed. Just like that. As if we are stupid, we went to school now cancer is eating you and you know humanly speaking that this cancer is progressing let me tell you how to deal with it forget about the cancer and go back and dance before god close your door call him all the names that will put pressure on him i call you healer your name is healer you are the healer to me i call you healer your name is healer, healer you are, and healer you be. Listen, when you mount pressure on him, listen, you know, the way people behave sometimes, we behave as if God, you wrote an exam where you wrote nonsense, and it came out A, now you are in final year, and your supervisor looks at you, and says if i'm in this department you will not graduate and you are about to depress yourself no go and lock the door and say in hundred level where is the man that brought 3.5 for me regardless of this oh god listen i'm not motivating you i'm giving you a key to get out of confusion and make men swallow their words I pray you believe what I'm teaching you because a day will come you will need it. Are we together? You are confused. Three years, no child. And everybody is talking. Saying if you, if you claim that you love God, where is the child? And then you sit down depressing yourself and say, but God, you say, Abba, am I not serving you? You will never get a miracle that way. There is a law. Lean not on your own understanding. He says in all your ways acknowledge 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 in one minute can you open your mouth and acknowledge him mention the things he has done in your life before please open your mouth i survived cancer in 99 i survived financial crisis in 2007 is it today I will lack food to eat where is the god of heaven if he gave me a husband will he not give me a child if he gave me a job will he not give me promotion if he granted me grace to graduate will he not give me a job if he gave me life will he not change my genotype from ss to aa Acknowledge him before Goliath. My rent has expired by Friday. If I don't pay, they will throw me out. Lord, where are you? Last year, at the dying minute, my rent came. I acknowledge you. Ay, 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 ay. The mighty God. You are the mighty God. The great I am 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Come on, acknowledge Him before every trouble in your life. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great. Listen, when you grow in this law, there are some challenges you will not even pray about again. Because how do you start saying God is not faithful? When the challenges stand before you, there are too many testimonies to make you think about them. So what made you cry yesterday will no longer make you cry today. Listen, let me tell you, you know why men are bold in the kingdom? some of us are bold because we have gone through hell and high water i'm telling you there's nothing you can think about that we've not gone through so when it's like a man who has entered prison and came out entered prison came out entered prison then one day you tell him i'll take you to prison he'll just look at you and say you are joking go and ask your warder his name is philip ask him whether he knows joshua and at the end you have nothing listen satan thrives on your fear he knows that our memories are so short we forget too early he said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits please lift your voice in one minute to the shame of the devil and say lord you are faithful the marriage will still happen open your mouth and pray i will still be a landlord I will still hold my certificate. That job will still come. Kabarata shapata kata. Lekete preske lebaba. Supplies will come from heaven. Men may laugh at me, but there is a God that sits in heaven. Are you praying? It's part of the meeting. Challenge your fear. Don't run away from it. Who are you down mountain? Where were you when God healed me? I really want you to acknowledge him. I really want you to acknowledge him. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Reliable God. Reliable. Open your mouth in one minute. Call that challenge by name and tell it I will walk upon you. Come on, go ahead and pray. Don't be afraid. Call it by name. Look it in the eye and say, Barrenness. One day you will be my testimony. Oh yes, oh yes It doesn't come to kill Hallelujah 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Please give God a shout of praise and sit down. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Take this key. Go back with it. And what challenges fear you? Fear you. Because you'll find out that nothing is as big as it looks. Let me tell you, I've gone through too many things in my life to tell you no challenge can kill by itself until you direct the gun and shoot it at yourself. I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Anytime and any day, I have confidence in you. Jesus, Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Let me tell you something. The next time you see men laughing at you, don't worry. There is already a scripture. It said, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Rejoice not over me. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, do I fall, yet I will rise. There is a mechanism in the kingdom that remedies for it. Aya. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He had resurrected. Others were talking about his death. On his way to Emmaus, they were busy discussing the man who died. And he said, gentlemen, I'm already have a, a reason. This is outdated curriculum. That's how some people will sit down while they are discussing and saying, ah, this lady now, now wow, I don't know. Or while they are discussing, your text will just come. My God has done it again. The miracle worker has done it again. Please sit down. You see, it is this understanding that can make two people come again anybody come it is this understanding come that can make two people walk with me walk through life someone stands at a point where people say he cannot cross and another person continues going because there is something this guy knows they at a point they were at the same level but while this guy was praising his way to the next dimension this one was complaining. Listen, let me teach you something. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16, listen, that Paul and Silas, they held them bound. Four guards. Even if the chains break, those guards will kill you. The Bible says they prayed and they sang. It was allowed and the prisoners had them. Is it in your Bible? All of a sudden, the Bible says there was an earthquake. It hit the prison. This is the part I like. It says, and all doors opened. How many doors? It's in your Bible. It says when they sang and the earthquake came, all doors opened. You can praise your way out of any pain. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. Just hurry up, sir. Sit down, sit down, sit down. So we'll hurry up. I tell you, this thing fired my spirit myself. So after 10 years, he's still rising. As if the devil does not exist. I watched a video of Bishop Oyedeko this morning preparing his congregation. That was before their 35th anniversary. 35 years 
of living as if Satan does not exist. And we had a ministration on Sunday. The 35th anniversary was this, was the last Sunday. I made sure I streamed and I followed before I went for the meeting. While I was bathing, I took my laptop. It was streaming so that I would hear from the bathroom in our hotel room before I went out. Kenneth Copeland was preaching. And then I was listening. Before Kenneth Copeland came, they danced their way around the stage to the shame of the devil. And I saw his wife, who once died, but now alive, dancing together, strong and alive. Our mother was dancing to the shame of the devil. When you dance before your enemy, you frustrate them. Please, stop wasting your tears. You have cried before every other person but God. I forbid you from crying before men. There is nothing you are going through that is new under the sun. Please hear me. Until you find the key that opens that door, you may remain in that captivity forever. Number what? The law of mastery and competence. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The fourth law I want to teach you, secrets of the kingdom. The law of mastery and competence. Proverbs 18 verse 16. The gift of a man makes room for him. Please come. I have to use them. Three of you, any three of you, just come. Watch this. I want to illustrate this scripture. Come. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness and the table of life. The space is already full. There is no space for anyone. Are we together? Anybody who must go to the table of greatness must show what he's taking along with him. So the Bible says, the concept of something for nothing is armed robbery. There must be something you must carry, your contribution to life. And here's how the Bible puts it. The gift of a man, watch this, will make room for him are you seeing that there was no space but your gift will push and create a space for you in life the key to mediocrity is to want everything and contribute nothing mediocrity and hardship in life stems from a mentality that wants everything done for you but with no contribution to life. Your relevance is tied to your contribution to the purposes of God and the betterment of humanity. Are we together? I was teaching at a Kingdom Wealth Summit in Joss and I said, any man that ever says preachers should not be rich, God will punish him. You know, there are people who especially when they look at some of us who are young they just say forget about all these young boys so they're all idiots just leave them they know what they are doing and they give an idea like these people are fraudulent they are drug barons they are this and that and that or 419 people no the measure of your worth and your greatness in life hear me please is tied to your contribution are we together you pay a carpenter 5,000 naira for fixing your door because that's how much you perceive his contribution to be. But you pay a pilot 500,000 from the day he graduates. He starts collecting 500,000. You know why? Because 175 people are trusting their destinies for one hour and he's the one driving it. And they are paying him and saying, you better make sure you read well. To carry the destiny of presidents, Prime ministers, royalties, politicians. Flying is something that you can't do anything about. You just pray. If the pilot sleeps or he's careless or something happens, you are gone. So they pay him 500,000 for taking that risk. 
when they are carrying out a neurosurgery you pay between 3.5 to maybe 8 million because of the enormity of what that doctor is doing are we together yes listen our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contributions and our service i know why god is blessing me as a preacher it's not because i'm preaching the gospel it's because i'm adding value to lives my value may be spiritual if you think it's easy to cast out devils try it if you think it's easy to look at a sick body and say be healed and he goes to the hospital and finds out that hiv has left him you do it let me tell you if your anointing is only for um children fruit of the womb is enough to employ you for your lifetime because that is that is a contribution now the question i want to ask you is every man can know where you stand by how much you are contributing is wickedness to demand millions when your contribution has not matched that level there's no point praying are we together yes as i stay in the secret place and i learn more about the mysteries of the kingdom i am equipped by grace to contribute more and as i contribute more different kinds of rewards come back now that's not my motivation that's why you don't pay me for teaching but whether i sell it or it's given free i am authorized to be rewarded listen your greatness in life is tied is a direct measure of your contribution if at any point in your life you are not satisfied with your level as far as greatness is concerned then it means you have to do something to your contribution whose life is becoming better because you are alive every day i get up someone's life is changing because i'm alive and you wonder why somebody will bless me is that no wickedness you type a letter for a man for one month he gives you hundred thousand you call yourself a secretary i'm changing the mindsets of people and changing the mindsets of their generation and someone sows one million and you say it's wickedness think about it and we have all these these junk people who carry typewriter carry their laptops and say men of god are wearing this and that and doing this and not doing anything because to them they think we are just joking on stage and the person who is talking did not sell his android device to give mission field but he's saying the man of god should sell his watch or his car let me tell you the fivefold ministry is secondary to no other ministry on earth the second most noble call after the call of ministry is the call of a monarch then presidents of whatever nation the president is only there for four years after four years he's stripped of his authority and relevance only a monarch is close to a true man of god irrelevance please make no mistakes to think genuine men of god and nuisance to society go to a seminar and find out how much you will pay for what i'm teaching you now and see the millions of naira that you will have to pay for your mindset being corrected and those guys do not have the grace the anointing equivalent to help you our greatness in life is not measured by connection it's measured by our contribution so you can know right where you are seated how far you are in life and not be angry when you see another person i've not slept i've not slept properly i think maybe in the last one or two weeks because we've been traveling it was about a week since i was in zaria we returned back yesterday returned back had to just take my bath and rush for school of ministry was with them till in the evening and i returned back this morning had a lot of things to do we are supposed to be off to the airport tomorrow to ibadan but then i was happy hearing that um the program has been shifted that's contribution brothers and sisters that's contribution 
A Jimmy's wife made cake for me. She makes cakes. Beautiful cakes. That's her contribution. I will pay her because I cannot bake it. The day I'm tired of paying her, I learn how to bake it. Are we together? Let me tell you why many people are poor in the kingdom. You are not contributing anything. So whoever you must receive from, you have to give something. Are we together? Watch this. Please lend this. This is a little money. Let me use it for an example. I have this money. Watch this. This is life. Whoever can contribute to life must benefit from it. Financially and otherwise. I'm just using this to represent fulfillment. Are we together? Now, they pay me salary. Please give me back. They pay me. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. They pay me salary. Are we together? I'm not providing any service. So I go to someone to fix my car. He's contributing. He takes from the salary. I go to the market woman who had enough sense to risk herself and sit down in the market. I pay her. Are we together now? All kinds of things are happening to me. I now, because I'm not a practitioner of the word, I'm falling sick. I'm not typing. I think pastors are idiot. What happens? The devourer is destroying me. The remaining part of the salary goes to the doctor. Watch this. Are we listening? What is it to me? Nothing. This is a measure of how much I've contributed to life. Nothing. That's why it always finishes. Are we together? There's no magic about satisfaction and greatness. The day I create something that forces him to give me back my money, he will need it so he will come to me and give me back. Something I'm doing will make her bring it back. Something I'm doing will make it bring it back. What is that something? If you don't have it, stop wondering why you are poor. Our rewards in life, both in terms of money, honor, and the sense of fulfillment is tied to your contribution. I will never feel inferior in life because if I do not carry any other thing, I have an anointing. I have an anointing that the nations need and they will need it forever. It is needed in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. The precepts of the kingdom that have been communicated to me, there is a demand for it. That's why you are gathered here. That's why not even the rain took you back to your house. Are we together? It's a measure of how much you need this. Please hear me. Begin to sharpen your gifts and abilities and tell yourself, I'm rising to that position of greatness. I will take something in my hands that will veto my background and open the doors of greatness for me. Is God speaking to someone now? There are doctors here. The moment they graduate, for those who are student doctors, there is a job for them. Because the amount of frustration from disobeying the word of God has increased their market. In the, num the amount of tranquilizers that are consumed every time. High blood pressure now affects teenagers. Good business for doctors. Darkness shall cover the earth. What do you have? If I call you right now, please three of you stand up. One, two, three. And I tell you, what do you have to contribute to life that will make you relevant? It is wickedness to want to stand here with nothing to contribute. So I come to you and you give me the word of God and change my mind. You are blessed. I come to you and you give me a sense of leadership and innovation. You are blessed. I come to you and um, maybe you solve my security problems. And then you come to me and I say, don't worry. I'm, I'm here. I mean, it's just, a, it's just a political thing. That's wickedness. Listen. Your greatness is tied to your gifts. The gift of a man. When discovered when refined please sit down and when deployed will make room for him scriptures cannot be broken has nothing to do with background has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with 
territorial limitations your gift has equal value in every territory I love people I admire them but not intimidated by any because the gift of God in me does not need refrigeration I don't need electricity for it to come up are we together if you go to the filling station and there's no light you will kill there because they need electricity are we together now if you want a photocopy machine and light goes off and there's no gen nothing for you but bring a demon possessed person whether i'm sleeping or I'm, I'm awake that spirit is living at that point bring somebody whose mind is messed up i can get him born again and teach him the precepts of the kingdom that's value you may not be called into the fivefold ministry are we together but your value will change the money in your hand your value will change everything in your life please write it down i have an assignment this week to discover every gift god has put in me and to serve my generation with that gift and exit myself out of the realm of inferiority and pain and competition we compete with ourselves we hate ourselves there's no need for that there is enough space in fact life is still needing great men are we together life is still needing great men there are people thank you there are people who are looking for this die hard there was a day we looked for this it never came i only wanted 30 naira out of this it didn't come because i was not contributing anything substantial yet i wanted to be blessed it was against the law of god but today it cannot stop coming to me even if i drive it it will not go why value for as long as there is one devil on earth i will not be poor for as long as there is one person's mind that needs to be straightened is called value please hear me do you know the holy ghost is within you and his presence makes you valuable the presence of the holy ghost gives you the ability to provide supernatural solutions to different dimensions of life's problem you should be fulfilled but you watch how many men are frustrated in our society they get up in the morning and they are angry bus conductors civil servants who are angry going to do a job they don't like everybody angry we vent it at our husbands vent it at our wives on serious pastors vent it at their members we are going to stop here and pray the gift of a man makes room we'll continue next week please rise up and let's pray he's the holy ghost spirit of the living god he's the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings he's the holy ghost seal of the age to come you're changing everything in obedience sing it one more time from the depth of your heart you're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age to Come. You're changing. point number one lord i'm leaving this level forever on the strength of the mysteries you are giving me lift your voice and pray i leave this level forever i leave this level forever there is a level of the anointing that i need to step into total surrender is the key to that level there is a level 
of relevance for the kingdom that I need to step into your value your contribution is the key to that level there is a level of transformation that I need in my life the key is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind to have your ideologies and paradigms change Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and say, Father, from tonight, anything that exalts itself above you in my life no matter what it is i bring it down to its rightful place lift your voice and pray it could be ministry it could be business lord i come against that thing stopping the anointing from multiplying in my life stopping my ranking in the spirit Pray every idol taking the place of God in my life. I come against it. I come against it. I come against it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and challenge every paradigm. He said, pulling down every stronghold, stronghold, something here is creating imaginary giants in your life. Something here is creating imaginary giants. When light comes, you will find out that it was never a giant. I like you to cry and say, Lord, beyond my culture, change my mind beyond my exposure as a nigerian may your word challenge my paradigms my ideology that came from my failures that came from my background that came from my village my african uh, the, the fact that I'm, I'm a nigerian the limitation that came with my territory As we behold him in a mirror we are changed we are changed from glory to glory hallelujah hallelujah the final prayer point you are going to call for every dormant gift in you some of you are sitting in an ocean but you are begging for a cup of water where is that gift that will end poverty in my life where is that gift that will end inferiority oh god reveal it in my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray that ability of the spirit our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life our rewards in life our relevance in life our greatness in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. Koinonia will build you to, be, to become a complete kingdom ambassador. 
not just that you are anointed and your finances are suffering not just that you are doing well financially and failing in relationships not just that you are doing well in relationships and failing intellectually there can be complete balanced growth you can be a multi-millionaire for the kingdom yet not carried away by its influence in your mind and you can be passionate about the kingdom and what it represents having a personal relationship with god and then excelling in family excelling in leadership becoming an agent of national transformation it says savior shall arise out of zion and he said they shall judge the mount of esau i pray for you in the name that is above all names and by the power of the holy ghost the kind of encounter you have never had with the holy ghost i pray in this season step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter an encounter that will take your prayer life your word life to a dimension you have never seen i release upon you the grace for that encounter number two i pray for you the level of transformation that it takes to crumble the giants before you let me tell you many giants we so honor are imaginary they are not real the level of transformation it takes for you to rise to a point where you do what has never been done in your family you do what has never been done in your lineage receive the grace for that kind of transformation in the name of jesus christ listen hear me that spirit that keeps telling you you have to be like them everybody was a failure you are also like them i like you to shout no way shout it no way listen my bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up there is something you know that can take you out of your background the last prayer for you and i'm praying this from the depth of my spirit the hands that lifted you will uphold you to the end you will not be afraid listen hear me ordinary men found what god put in them and it changed the course of their lives this is one of the testimonies you probably would not need me except for what he has put in me like he did to me i pray whatever god must do to you to bring out that anointing that grace that illumination that will make you an international figure to the shame of the devil that anointing please lift your hand something is coming upon you now i want to release a grace get ready right now at the count of three the grace the unction right now receive it receive that grace now 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 right now shabakata receive that grace wherever you are inside outside an impartation let deep call on to deep that grace that grace your potentials your abilities the anointing of the holy ghost that distinguishes you in the name of jesus i command it i command it i command it i release it right now right now i command it shakatabaya no more failure no more failure i take you out by prophecy out of the realm of mediocrity out of the realm of failure I speak over your destiny whoever has ignored your grace i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray 
your life will force them to swallow their words they told nathaniel can anything good come out of nazareth i prophesy over someone here quarter to shame may your gift bail you out quarter to shame may your gift bail you out hallelujah lift your hands and give jesus thanks lord we give you thanks we'll continue next week there are still other powerful principles that i have to share with you you know why i'm taking time to teach you this brothers and sisters it says they are life to those who find them when you find it and grace is applied upon you to walk with it you will you will be afraid of what your life will become in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus very quickly i know that our time is spent but just be patient in about five minutes we're done please all those worshiping with us for the first time aside from our daddy and mommy i'd like us to honor them these are david dam's parents thank you thank you thank you sir thank you ma hallelujah praise the lord let me say something it's a little secret the first time i met them i was blown away by the warmth the love i mean when you meet them you don't want to get out of that environment again i'm telling you i met them in just and i was looking at david Dam, and in my mind i said no wonder no wonder this guy is this confident and happy who would not be confident with parents like this some of us escape jungles we climb high waters rebuke statements that should not be said to be where we are today but when you have parents this loving, they deserve double honor. Bless you, ma. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please, aside from them, all those who are worshiping with us for the first time, um, I'd like you to come here quickly. Okay, before we do that, just give me one minute. Where are all the Abuja people? Please come up quickly so that you receive fresh fire for the next level. Please, quickly, in one minute. Let's honor them. Let's celebrate them. We're one big family. There's no space. They can come up here. Please, quickly, quickly. We have five minutes to be out of here. Stretch your hands, everyone, and pray for them. Please come up. Just our Abuja people first. Just come up. Line up here quickly. You came all the way with a desire in your heart. Let me pray for you. Please, quickly, quickly, in one minute, so that we can pray. When Saul met Samuel, he was never the same. Please pray in one minute. You are about to receive something you will take back by the grace of God. You will step into a strange level of grace. As I lay my hands on you, an anointing will come upon you. Please, I want you to believe it. Something is already happening to you. There is a strong presence of angels here. Hallelujah. At time, hold your hands together and lift it up. Let me pray for you. Please lift it up high to the heavens. I'm about to release an anointing upon you. Let this anointing take you to new levels. At the count of three. One, two, three. Fire. Take it. Take it. Take it. I lay hands on you. Take it right now. Fire. Take it right now. 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 Fresh fire. 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 F
I prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus go to your campus set it on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I activate upon you the presence of God that is upon this house carry it physically right now right now carry it physically that mantle that mantle that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you go with it and excel hallelujah I call you blessed in the name of Jesus every miracle you came here desiring it is yours right now in Jesus name those who can rise take them to their seats those who cannot just leave them here we're about to round up please God bless you appreciate them please quickly if they are under the anointing just leave them just give me five minutes quickly I needed to do this to honor them they came all the way so that they can take something tangible koinonia is a place of encounter hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time aside from them now any other person worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front here the altar is congested but make your way to the front hallelujah you are the first to come so i will lay hands on you i will lay hands on the rest receive that fire right now in the name of the lord jesus christ grace for you please every other person make your way to the front there's a reason why we ask you to come it's not to waste your time believe me there is a grace when you come here you just need to come once and that grace must speak in your life Stretch your hands, saints of God. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter, a place of miracles, a place of breakthrough. God is doing supernatural things. The kingdom of God has been allowed to find expression in this territory. Pray for them. The people praying for you are anointed. I want you to receive it. We bless you with the favor that is upon this house. We bless you with the gift of access. We bless you with intimacy grace to know God grace to love God grace to be so passionate about spiritual things that nothing in this life can take the place of God receive that grace in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you for coming once again this is koinonia hallelujah listen please this is not our usual venue we meet at Christ Gospel Church just opposite second equa from next week we'll be back there you're welcome to worship with us again and again at the end of the service a media stand is just right um, by my right here you together with all those who have come from far please go to our media stand update your collection of our teachings and you can take them back be a blessing to others and then be blessed by them the Lord bless and honor you the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus I'd like you to quickly follow the young lady waving